Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to episode four. Congratulations on getting here. You now have a pretty good understanding of some of the very basics of Godot. Uh, if you still feel a little lost, that's totally cool. Um, the first thing I wanna do today is go ahead and show the solution for the homework assignment from last time. So I, I asked you guys to see if you can make this guy rotate just like we were able to do with our movement here. So I'm just gonna stick him like somewhere where we can see him a little better. Now we're going to be using the rotation degree uh, property here. So I hover my mouse over, we see if the rotation degree is all under, um, I'm sorry, all lowercase with an, an underscore. And in the physics process, I am going to go ahead and say, um, let's see, rotation degrees, uh, dot, and we'll just say plus equals mm, five, okay? And that's literally all you had to do. And then if we run this, see that he's he's spinning like that. Okay, so uh, in today, well, in the last lesson, what we did is we covered the physics process, really, really important function in Godot, and we also covered the vector uh, value type. And vectors are extremely, extremely important in Godot and all of game development, no matter what engine you're using. So today we're gonna be taking a little deeper dive into vectors. Uh, we're going to be explaining first like how you might use them, as well as some vector math uh, and some basic stuff like that. So a vector is basically a coordinate in this 2D plane, right? Uh, and the coordinate starts here. So right here, this is the origin where you see these lines intersect, and that is zero, zero. And you can actually go ahead and see that if we zoom in, we don't have to zoom in, but you see up here on the rulers, zero and zero. And at the bottom here, the bottom right of your screen, so the top left is zero, zero, the bottom right is going to be your window size. So here, I actually forgot what I said it as, so if we go to project, project settings, scroll down till we see window, click this. Uh, we can see that the width is 960 and the height is 540. So right here is 960, 540 on a grid, right? And then here is just going to be half of that. So I'm actually gonna make note of that right now. So we're gonna say var center, center equals vector two, uh, I believe it was 9480 and 270, so it's four, so the center is uh, 480 over 270, and this is just the width divided by two and the height divided by two right there, and uh, we can go ahead and see that that will be right here. So if I put my guy over here, and let's say in a ready position, I say position equals center, and I run the game, you can see that we're now dead in the center of our screen because we've just set that there. Okay, so that's the basics of how vectors work as coordinates. I do wanna go ahead and mention that, uh, so something that might be a little odd is that unlike a typical coordinate plane, which has the Y in the going up for positive, Godot in most game dev has it going down for positive. So we can see that up is uh, negative, down is positive, right is positive, and left is negative. And I'll show you what that means, right? So again, the vector is a x and y coordinate. So if we have a vector with a positive x value, that means that that is pointing to the right. If it is a negative x value, it's pointing to the left and vice versa for the uh, y value. If it is a negative y value, we are going up. If it is a positive y value, we are going down. Uh, and a great way to illustrate that is to quickly run a little, a few prints here. So you've probably seen these in tutorials. Um, so if we go vector2.0, that comes in, and we write vector2.up, uh, vector2.right, uh, vector2.down, uh, and vector2.left. Uh, okay, and now if I run this real quick, we can see that it printed out these values here. So 0, 0, that's what 0 does. Uh, 0, negative 1, because this one is up, right? So the y value here is negative 1 because it's up. Here we have a positive uh, x value, which means it's to the right. Here we have a positive y value, which means it's down. And here we have a negative uh, x value, which means it's to the left. So uh, yeah, that's basically what that does. You'll see people use these quite often, especially because um, sometimes it's just nice for people not to have to remember all, all those directions and stuff. But it, I think it is helpful to explain. You oftentimes see people say vector 2.0, and this is exactly the same as, as saying zero, zero. I mean, as you can see from the print down here. Um, so yeah, like vector two to up is exactly the same again as saying uh, this is up. So that's zero in the X and then uh, negative one in the Y. So yeah, I think that's pretty important to cover. And that also leads us into our next aspect, which is called normalized vectors. So uh, essentially we have this vector here, for instance, that is 50 by 50. Uh, and we wanna say, you know, like what is that normalized? 
So the normalized value of something gives you a value between that has to be uh, one, like less than uh, one. So if we look at a grid, right, like we just had here, and we just have right here, we can see that the, these are the normalized values. The normalized value is maximum uh, one in any direction, and they have to at total add up to be one. So for instance, if you wanted to look to the right, uh, these would be all your normalized vector values. Whereas, you know, if you wanted to move 100 to the right, that would be uh, something like vector two, uh, 100, zero, right? This is 100 to the right. And also, if you put one zero, right, that's one to the right, or it's it's also a direction uh, in, in game dev. So that's really important. Uh, and I think it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but much uh, better when you actually realize what we're doing here. So I think to illustrate that, what I'm actually going to do is move us in a normalized vector direction. So I'll go ahead and put, well, actually, we can leave that here in the ready function. So we'll say position equals center. Okay. Uh, and then right here in physics process, what I'll go ahead and do is have it move in those different directions. So we'll say position plus equals, um, we'll do five times our, uh, we'll do like vector two dot up. Now this actually kind of peeks us into a little bit of vector math. Uh, if you add two vectors, so I guess I should explain that really quickly. So vector math, uh, it gets a little complicated once you get into more complicated stuff, but for general addition multiplication, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, for instance, let me go ahead and just comment this out real quick. If we go ahead and write, uh, for instance, speed plus center, well, let's just do this, plus vector two, uh, 10, 10, right? What happens is you simply add the x values and the y values. Uh, and so what I'll do here is do this and print that. We'll run it. And you see we just get 60, 60. So that's how vectors are added. And you can see that, uh, just to make that clear, because I know that some people might get confused by that, we're doing this, right? And that is equal to 60, 60, which is pretty simple. Then you can also multiply a vector. So if we do this and we say like uh, 2 times this, um, it's just, you know, just multiplying the two through. So it's two times 10 and two times 10. Uh, and the answer is 20, 20. And uh, uh, hopefully I'll remember to put a little graphical representation of both of those on the screen if that helps you. I honestly think that the graphical representation of addition is a little confusing, but multiplication is a little handy. You're literally just doubling the vector. Um, yeah, and you can think of these as, as points in 2D space. If you haven't taken physics, I think those, those uh, diagrams might be honestly a little confusing to you. So uh, go ahead and ignore those. Now, if you multiply two vectors, so let's say I do speed times this, uh, as you can see, you just multiply both times each other. You're not foiling. You're not going 50 times 100, then you know, blah, blah, blah. You're just multiplying both of the vectors. And it, again, that's really confusing when you look at it graphically, but you can see that all we're doing is, is multiplying both of those values by each other. So that's the basics of vector math. And so what we're doing here is we're increasing our position right by this. So what we're doing is, I guess it might even be more handy to kind of look at it like this, times five, okay? So what we're doing here is we're giving ourselves a direction and we're multiplying it by what we call a scalar, right? This can be an, uh, an integer, you can make this 5.2, it doesn't really matter. The point is that this is now going to be a, a direction, right? And you can see that this is, this is the same as saying um, I'll write a hashtag here, vector two, um, this would be zero, negative five, right? Because we know that this is uh, zero, negative one. I don't know why I did that. This is zero, negative one. So this is exactly the same as saying that. But the good news about this, and the reason you might want, or you will almost certainly want to do it, is that you can specify, for instance, once we start taking input from the player, you know, what, it, what direction is he pressing with the W, A, S, D, or arrow keys? If he's pressing to the right, we know that the direction, here's the direction, and then just multiply that times whatever we just say our velocity is. So typically, uh, what we'll do is not actually use speed as something like this, but we'll say something like uh, velocity equals uh, 10, right? And then we'll put that like right here, 10, oopsies, uh, so velocity. Uh, and then we'll multiply that times 
delta. Uh, and then again, we probably need to make this like 100 because if, I forgot the delta is going to hamper that. Now, if we go ahead and do this, we see that it moves in the up direction. And then we can change this, of course, to down. And it'll move in the down direction. Um, and then, of course, you know, right. I guess I don't need to do it for it. Well, now I feel obligated to do left. <laughs> don't want it to feel left out. You know, you hate sad vectors. There you go. So that shows you how to do that. Now, uh, if we're going into a direction, right? So if we're going in any kind of direction, uh, for instance, a normalized vector in the exact, uh, we can say we want it to go one in the y, or one in the x, one in the y. Now, this is going. This is not a normalized vector because it's going one in both directions. So if I go ahead and actually, we'll do this, uh, and then I will comment this out real quick. And then I want to go ahead and say print. So well, I guess we'll do prints vector this. And then we're going to do that and use something dot normalized. OK, now dot normalize is a really important function of vectors. OK, so here's another way you can call functions uh, based on if you have a certain type. So here we have a vector. And if we put dot and then normalized here with two parentheses, what that's doing is it's modifying this in its place right so that it's changing this value so if we go ahead and print this you can see that we've got two wildly different values well, I guess I guess not wildly different but um, you see this is point zero you know this crazy number and that's because that is exactly well I guess it doesn't mean that it exactly adds up to one but the point is that that will not give you uh, any kind of boost in one direction so and we can go ahead and see that actually right here so I guess we don't need to comment that out but if we do this and then run it you can see the speed that it's moving there and then if we go ahead and put dot normalized and then run it, uh, well, it's, it's not a notable difference here in this case at least, but uh, there is actually a, you will be moving faster. So that's really important for input, right? Because when we're taking input, if you push the up key in the, the right key, you'll be getting a value of one, one, right? Which is not normalized. And thus you're going to be moving in the uh, 45 degree direction like this much, a little bit faster than you would be if it were normalized. So that's really important. Uh, and so you want to make note of this normalized function here uh, because it's really, really helpful for keeping vectors uh, around a normalized track. And that's basically how we would do direction in Godot. Uh, and again, we're taking this and then we're multiplying it by the velocity, which is an int or float scalar value. And uh, yeah, so here's a direction of value times a scalar value. And that's basically how we typically use uh, vectors. Okay, so continuing along with normalized vectors, we can also get the direction to a certain point. And this is obviously really important because you might say, if you're making a click and point game, or let's say you're making enemies that run towards the player, you basically want to give them the position of whatever you want them to go towards and have them just know what direction to move. So here again, we have our velocity, which equals 100. Right now, we're telling it to move in this direction. What we want to do now is calculate a new direction for it to move. So what I'm going to do is actually get rid of this right here. So we will start. Uh, let's reset this back to 0, 0. And we want it to move towards the center. So what I'll do is I'll say um, position dot direction 2. And then we'll put where we want to go to. So uh, we are going to the center. Just like that okay now essentially what we're saying is we're saying we're giving it our position and you can say self dot position right this is just you know it's exactly the same in Godot and this is saying that we're taking our position and we're using this again a function just like normalized to get the direction to this and this is a function that returns you a normalized vector in fact let's go ahead and print this out so you can see what's happening okay now because we are well, I guess we're not part this won't be exactly 45 degrees, right? But it's it's going to be close to that 45 degree vector that we saw before, which was like 0.7 by 0.7, right? Uh, and you'll see that now we move towards the center. And you can see, yeah, we've got this kind of weird looking vector down here in the bottom. And again, you can see us moving towards that point. And in fact, uh, when we pass it, yeah, you can see now he just stops there because he's just he's passing it and then going back and then just going back and forth over and over and over again. And you can go ahead and change whatever this value is. So we can say like we want this to be uh, vector two, one hundred by uh, thousand, right? 
and then it's gonna go down like kind of like this, you know what I mean? So that's really that's really cool, and that's how you would use normalized vectors. I think normalized vectors are extremely important to understand, and almost everybody who makes movement is going to make that whatever input you take from the user as their arrow keys is the direction, and then we're just going to multiply that times how fast we want the person to move, and then times delta. So something I forgot to mention originally, but I think is really important, is that typically in tutorials, you don't actually see people using this dot direction to function, um, but it is exactly equivalent to what they do do, which is this. So you'll typically see um, some parentheses, uh, and we'll put in here, for instance, center minus our position, right? And then we'll say dot normalize. So if you subtract two vectors, you're going to get a vector that points to the first vector in this. And then we're normalizing that result to then get a normalized directional vector towards whatever that is. Now, if we run this, uh, you can see that our guy moved towards the center exactly in the same way, if I hit Command-Z a bunch of times here, uh, as it did here. These are doing the exact same thing, but uh, I, I prefer to use this because I think it's a little cleaner and uh, it you know, takes up less space. So. And so that is basically all I wanted to cover with vectors today. In the next episode, we're gonna be getting into if statements, which are really, really important in code, very logically uh, uh, understood by people. And we're going to be using those to actually take input from ourselves and make our guy move around the screen the way we want to. So we're starting to kind of inch our way into making a video game here, folks. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.